Hey, hey, Blue Table fans. Today we're going to take a look at a Forge World model for Games Workshop's Warhammer 40K line. This is a Corsair Phoenix Bomber, or just a Phoenix Bomber. This one is done up in Ulthway colors. Let's go ahead and just give that one a spin. And uh, this is armed with uh, two shuriken cannons with anti-aircraft mounts. Note that's not twin-linked. That is actually two separate weapons. So that gets six shots. It has a pulse laser standard on the bottom, even though you can't see it. In fact, I'll just go ahead and turn this one over a little bit. Um, this one has twin link star cannons, which is an upgrade that you can get for free. It also has, if you look on the wings here, it has uh, banks of missile launchers. Uh, those are Phoenix missile launchers, uh, which can be uh, Strength 5 AP3 Heavy 3 or Strength 4 AP5 Heavy 3 Blast. No cover saves and pinning. So that's awesome. And uh, oh, that second uh, one is called Nightfire Missile Launchers. Uh, this also has um, uh, an Eldar Titan Holo Field, which is basically a four up and vulnerable save. So I'm not sure how good uh, that is uh, in the new system. Uh, the rules for that are in Imperial Armor 11, and uh, there are other Imperial Armors that have um, the rules for the Phoenix Bomber. In it, so this is what you used to need to get a uh, to get a an Eldar flyer. Uh, did want to show it uh, next to the um, whatever it is, the uh, Crimson Hunter. So I'm going to go ahead and just see if I can't hold them both up here next to each other. So there you go. So they are they are roughly the same size. The uh, Phoenix is uh, slightly slightly larger uh, just by a by a nose. And uh, I have to say, though, that the Crimson Hunter uh, really, really is awesome. And uh, if I had a Phoenix Bomber, I would uh, switch up the armament and call it a Crimson Hunter. So uh, anyway, I just thought I would show you this particular figure. And um, in fact, uh, this, this project has a couple other figures which I think are pretty cool. Okay, so here's a Karandras. And in the new rules, this guy is an absolute, is an absolute machine. Uh, he costs 200 and some odd points, and uh, he has, um, let's see here, yeah, he has four attacks base. I mean, he has, just has, he has like 10 special rules. Ancient Doom, Battle Focus, Eternal Warrior, Fearless, Fleet, Independent Character, Infiltrate, Move Through Cover, Night Vision, Stealth, Monster Hunter, Stalker, Ambush of Blades is his, uh, is his Warlord trait. Let's, uh, Let's take a look and see what that does. Uh, we've got, um, let's see, uh, one use only, and at the start of your shooting or assault phase, um, the Warlord and all friendly units within 12 inches reroll ones when rolling to wound. Ah, that is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and he has a Scorpion's Claw, and he's Strength 4, so that is 8 striking, uh, Strength 8, striking at initiative seven. And uh, he has a scorpion chain sword. Quite frankly, I don't know how that affects the claw. The uh, chain sword gives uh, plus one strength, AP six melee, so I don't know if it combines. Uh, I'm not sure if it does. Uh, and he's got uh, plasma grenades and a two up armor save. So yeah, this guy's this guy an absolute beast. And uh, the figure is just really stunning and I think uh, I think the BTP crew has has really done this guy has really done this guy justice. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, move Fuegan up. And uh, this model has stood the test of time. You know, it's been around since forever. Uh, this is a little bit of a conversion here. It's a sword instead of his regular uh, regular fire axe. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, take a look on the reverse there. All right. So those are some cool Eldar models plus some insight. Uh, thanks, as always, for tuning in and uh, getting your inspiration for the day.